Today I'm here with my good friend Philippe Lafont, who is the CEO of CO2. Uh, if you could give us a little background as to your investment philosophy and strategy, that would be awesome. Sure. Well, I started CO2 in 1999, and it wasn't an easy ride to where we are today. Uh, we started with $50 million in 1999 and uh, the Nasdaq was at 4,000 and then one month later it was at 5,000 so February 1st 2000 the Nasdaq was at 5,000 in uh, 2003 the Nasdaq was at 1,300 so in our first few years wow. the Nasdaq went down 80 percent and I just say that and I'll get back to the investment philosophy because in your professional life you're gonna more than once come across something that goes absolutely the opposite way of what you were hoping and the only people who um, sort of things go their way all the time is the sort of the once in a million guy who also wins 300 million bucks in the lottery right they will be the one person who by luck his roommate founded Microsoft and he's part of Microsoft from the beginning <laughs> right but for the average person you have to be ready for the fact that things are not going to be as expected and how do you prepare yourself to deal with the unexpected? Back to the question around the investment philosophy, like many people at Tiger, for us the key to investing is thinking about how can a company perform three to five years out? Mm -hmm. What can be great investments over three to five years? Not focus so much on the short term, try to see the forest from the trees, think about the long term. Few people in the market think about the long term and that's our edge. It's sort of patience and a longer term thinking. Got you. And you guys are long short. How do you how do you go about uh, picking short stocks? The long side is hard because uh, again you're sort of like trying to project what could happen five years out and come back and it's really hard to prove something in life. It so happens that it's much easier to disprove things and in fact some of these little math problems the way you go to prove is that you disprove that the opposite is possible therefore you've proved the problem in the first place. So for instance, on the short side, if you find a company where the stocks come from one to a hundred, and the company has one product and two customers, and the CEO is selling a lot of shares, uh, you're like, hmm, you know, maybe that's a good telltale. And yeah. if there's enough red flags, sooner or later, it's like a sand castle. If there's like too many bad pillars, sooner or later the castle crumbles. Okay. So the short side is more about pattern recognition and seeing a lot of odd things, and if there's enough odd things, that leads you to uh, uh, believe the company's wrong. There's a second type of shorts, which is the opposite of your long, which is if Google does really well, the yellow pages are probably not gonna do well. If Apple does really well, that's probably not great for Nokia or RIM. Mm -hmm. So that's the sort of the thesis, anti-thesis, winner, loser. But there's a whole big other groups of shorts that are more sort of like strange, anomalies that Got you yeah. have to pick. Um, Philippe, you hire a lot of people here. You don't hire a lot of people, but you do hire a few. What is it, what's the DNA of somebody that you sit there and say, you know what, this guy's perfect, this, this woman's perfect, gotta hire her? The first, uh, we don't have a lot of time. We have a couple people that work on this. We get a lot of resumes and stuff. So the first one is we obviously screen according to the education. If you've gone to a better school versus a not better school, that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. The second one is that on Wall Street, there's sort of a true and proven way to succeed when you're young. Go spend the first two to three years at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, um, McKinsey, uh, an, an investment bank. Um, there's so many people right now who say, oh, working on Wall Street, you're not gonna learn anything, you're not adding any value. I disagree. <laughs> Wall Street's a very competitive environment full of smart people, and if you can start your career in a competitive environment full of smart people, you're gonna learn a lot. Yeah. And you can choose to carry those skills whether you want to work at a large corporation, whether you want to create your own small business, whether you want to go to Silicon Valley, create a tech company, it doesn't matter. But what a great training ground. In fact, if you spent some time at Wall Street when you're young, you may not even need to go back to business school. It's that good of a training. So I would encourage people, despite the fact that now it's much less in vogue, 
mm -hmm. is go spend two or three years with a bunch of competitive high testosterone people, see if you like the environment. And then after that, while you're there, like when I graduated, I have no idea what's the difference between M&A, proprietary trading, sales, equity, private wealth management, all these things, like I didn't even know one of them. If you spend your two to three years there, you're gonna know what all these areas are, you're gonna figure out what you're interested in, what you're good at, and then there's ways to migrate from that. Uh, I think it's hard to start right after college in a hedge fund mm -hmm. and that you need some training before. And also, if you're at a hedge fund, you wanna make it there when you have the best training possible so that your chance of succeeding is good. But imagine that you don't know anything and the first two investment funds or mutual funds or private equity you go at, you sort of, you don't really learn anything. But then after a while, it'll be like, oh, you had a chance to work here, here, and here, and it didn't work out. You know, what are you? I think it's much better to prepare yourself in a large company so that the smaller the company is and the more entrepreneurial it is, the more incredible the opportunity is, but the most prepared you have to be. Yeah. People don't expect you to be prepared at JP Morgan on day one. But when you come to a small company, you have to be up and running because we don't have as much time to train people. We expect them to be already productive. Got you. Well, Philippe, listen, really appreciate your time. You're a very busy man. Philippe LaFont, CEO of Co2. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gideon.